Good afternoon. I have a small presentation on our experience working with the media to promote water integrity in WAS sector in Nepal. I have used this abbreviation, WAS, Water, Sanitation and Hygiene, and I will be frequently using this abbreviation throughout my presentation. <coughs> Uh, actually, uh, Fred, you have already done a survey that how many journalists are there. And also I raised my hand among the others category and I am not a journalist. So definitely you will not get a journalist perspective in my presentation. This is simply a, the sharing of our experience. And I hope many of you where Nepal is, this is located. Uh, in South Asia, in between India and China. And you can see in this map, the country is landlocked. A small country has got land area of about one, uh, 1, 147,000 square kilometer and population 26.5 million. And from this data in the right-hand side of this slide, you can make out that the country is developing one, a poor one. Uh, about 70% of its population they depend on the agriculture sector, and the country heavily depends on remittances. Most of our young people, they migrate to the Gulf countries, to India, and to many other countries in search of employment, and they send back uh, money in the form of remittance. And the good part about Nepal, this is the country of Mount Everest, the highest peak on the earth. Uh, I hope you know that. Uh, just for your information, out of the 10 highest peak mountains on the earth, eight are in Nepal. And the country is also the birthplace of Lord Buddha. And media in Nepal, in the last two decades, the media has uh, we developed in Nepal. Uh, before 20, 25 years, we had only one radio station, te one television uh, channel, and a few that newspapers. And almost all of them, they were owned by the government, by the state. But now there are many. Uh, there is very strong presence of private sector in the media. Now you, we have about 82 television channels and 628 FM radios and about 7,000 newspapers. Similarly, there are many online news portals and websites. And obviously, the media is a good source of news, information, communication, and entertainment. At Water Integrity Program, this is the program that we have been implementing in Nepal with support from Swiss Development Cooperation and with technical uh, backstopping of Water Integrity Network. This is a very small program, and we are working in three out of 75 districts in the country. The yellow shaded area, uh, uh, they are the working districts of Water Integrity Program. They are far away, some 700 kilometers away to the west from the capital city, Kathmandu. And this is how we have been working with the media. This is our, this is our approach. Water integrity program, this supports uh, building capacity of the media person. This capacity building, especially in the war sector, you know. Uh, we provide them training, orientation on the uh, war issues, on the institutional arrangement of was sector in the country. Similarly, we orient them on different legal provisions in the sector. We provide them logistics, fellowship, and one important thing that we are doing now is we are supporting to form a was media forum so that the media, the journalists working in the was sector are better organized, and the agencies who want to support uh, to improve uh, integrity in the was sector, definitely they will have easier uh, easy to approach with the media. So once this was media forum uh, is established and legally registered, definitely will have a very good uh, time to working with the media. And through this support, we expect that media persons uh, promote, support promoting integrity in was sector. And actually, this is not only the expectation, but in reality also they have been contributing a lot to promote uh, better practices of transparency, accountability, and participation staff in the WAS sector. And 
Here you can see this is the major thrust of this water integrity program, that ensuring or defending draft practices in the entire was sector, especially in the planning and budgeting, project implementation, and budget accounting. And here is the involvement of media. In the left-hand side, I have listed some newspapers, radios, television, uh, with uh, whom we are working, uh, whom we are supporting. And in the right-hand side, how they are involved in the sector. As you can see, they support disseminate information and create awareness, especially on the legal provision. Uh, they provide vast information. They provide information on budget and different agencies working in the sector, and they orient the people on the concept of this transparency, accountability, and participation. Similarly, on the concept of human right to water and sanitation. Again, you, I have used the abbreviation, sorry. HR2, WS, this is human right to water and sanitation. And media person, they have been reporting the WAS event at the different activities uh, in the WAS sector. Similarly, uh, uh, sometimes they are also publishing features and case, case studies in the WAS sector. And they have been supporting organized public hearing. I will uh, tell about this event in bit detail later. Media person participate in joint monitoring. This is the monitoring of uh, drinking water and sanitation project. They are randomly selected. Joint monitoring means the schemes, the projects are monitored by the media persons, by the representatives of the uh, water users committee, representatives of the political parties, and uh, uh, concerned government and non-government uh, agencies in the sector. And they also support communication and dialogue between the right holders and the duty bearers. And recently, media, this Nepal television, uh, this conducted one very good investigative and research on the was, was issues, especially in our working districts, three districts, and the intervention of water integrity program to better address that issues. And that was telecast from this channel. And public hearing, uh, this is uh, one uh, measure that the uh, event organized by radio journalists. Radio journalists, they go to the area where they conduct this public hearing. They uh, visit the area beforehand and collect the information on different type of was issues. And they set up the ground for discussion based on their research, you know. And in this event, this event is uh, organized in a certain geographic area. Uh, we call it Village Development Committee and all the people there, both the government and non-government agency and the users, they, are, they gather in, they participate in this event, and the users are provided opportunity to raise their concerns and demand better integrity with the concerned agencies. And the authorities present in that event, they respond to the questions and queries of the users. And in the same, same event, the concerned agencies, they make commitments uh, for corrective action whenever and wherever necessary. And the very interesting part of this event is this is aired live on radio as far as possible. Uh, as far as possible means we have very remote areas in our country in the hills. If there is that possibility of carrying the uh, equipments of the media person there, then only the program is not aired live, otherwise this is aired live. And now here I have arranged the photographs just to give you a feel how this public hearing event is conducted. Uh, here is the photographs of the event. Uh, to have some popular radio programs, there are many. I have just uh, brought here two as example. Uh, one is the Hamro Awaz, this is our voice in English, and the other is Shudr Sabal. The questions from remote areas. Uh, these two radio programs are quite popular uh, in our working areas. And here are some media coverage on was issues. Uh, all the that the issues cover 
uh, they are in Nepali language. I, uh, I don't think that you will understand, but uh, they are about issues in the war sector. Key message is, is obvious is the message that the media person, they have very important role in raising integrity as an issue and promoting their practices. And another important thing is that presence of media, you know, uh, makes the event more effective. If media persons are present there, definitely the concerned authorities will be more responsive to the uh, concerns of the people, and they take that seriously. Uh, wider dissemination of worse problems of the people draws attention of the concerned authorities. Uh, that is also obvious. Uh, another, the last one I'm going to explain, presence of the media makes people more confident to ask questions and demand better integrity, and this is very much important in the context like ours, you know, the people living in the remote areas, uh, they are not well educated, they don't have confidence, they hesitate to go to the concerned agencies to claim their eyes, to ask about the better services, you know. So if the media accompany them, if there is the strong presence of media, definitely they feel more confident to go to the concerned agencies. And this is very much needed to improve integrity in the war sector, I think. Uh, some issues. Uh, politics is priority area of the media. In the country like ours, you know, most part of the newspapers or the television channels or the radio programs that is covered by the news related to politics, political events, species of the political leaders, you know, the other issues get uh, very less uh, space in the media. Linkage between the media houses and political parties. Uh, many of our media houses, you know, they are owned by the influential leaders of the influence, influential political parties. And this uh, poses question on the integrity of the media houses itself. And looking at the wash issues from the integrity lens, still the wash problems are not looked at from the integrity lens. You know, people just talk about their wash problems, like excess that the repairs and maintenance, you know, they don't uh, look at that problem from the integrity uh, lens. And another issue, uh, dependence on wash implementing agency for running the media, this is especially in the rural areas, because the media person don't have uh, a good business out there, you know, there is no that the marketing activities, economic activities, so they cannot make uh, out money from this sources. And uh, some of them, not all, some of them have to depend on the uh, was agencies to get business, you know, in form of that the publication of tender notice or the sponsorship program, adver advertisements type of thing, you know. If you are getting business from someone, then you cannot state for what, a right or report against that agency. So that is the issues. Okay, this much from my side. Thank you very much. I hope the plenary will provide valuable inputs to address these issues. Thank, Thank you, you, Fred. Just stay there just one moment. Um, that, was, I mean, that was fascinating. I mean, it was very kind of empowering um, and a really very hopeful story about, about what's going on. Uh, I imagine that in amongst the collaboration and the discussion and the kind of good will that you have sort of conflicts and, and, and problems that are quite hard to uh, solve. I wondered if you could give us any example of, um, you know, specific issue which, uh, you know, what the problem was and how um, your process helped perhaps to resolve it. So is any, any, I mean, I, I don't want to sort of put you in a difficult position with any, any individual stories, but um, are there any individual examples that, that you can think of that um, kind of exemplify? Uh, yes, uh, about, uh, uh, about the access to information, you know, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have published that was investment plan of the districts and media persons, uh, especially the radio programs, they have been putting that was uh, uh, district was development plan on the media. And people are getting to know what is, which agency is doing what, and how much budget is allocated in that particular sector. Mm -hmm. And based on that information, you know, the people go to the uh, concerned agencies uh, to or demand 
uh, right uh, proper use of the budget allocated in their area. So that is one example. What, what are the agencies that they um, uh, go to most? What are the, what are the called critical agencies? Uh, there are both the government and the non-government, you know. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, that uh, Blaze Development Committee and the District Development Committees uh, uh, at the local level, which look after this development activities. We plan the development activities at the local level and implement. And mm -hmm. similarly, there are different uh, that uh, non-government organizations. You know. Also, they have got a very good, uh, big amount of budget allocated in this sector, mm -hmm. and uh, the people they go to both agencies, government as well as non-government agencies. But uh, they, they, they have problem, more problem with the government agencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. That was great, thank you.